what's going to happen with silver is that as gold goes up, and it's not so much gold going up, it's the dollar going down, silver goes up roughly twice as fast. Um, because nobody's got it. It's a very tight market. <laughs> So, um, I mean, I would say that the um, investor demand for silver has actually been extremely low, not just in this country, but also elsewhere. I mean, we've had uh, uh, India has upped its imports hugely. Why? Because they're making solar panels. I mean, they're trying to compete with China. You know, this isn't this isn't investor demand. Um, you know, the investors haven't really got in there yet. I mean, the idea that investors uh, buy silver, um, you know, if this was really true, it would be, be more priced as money than it is at the moment. It's just purely priced as an industrial metal. And if you look at the uh, gold-silver ratio, I mean, as, uh, as, as we speak, it's 83.9 .9 times now. Uh, when you bear in mind that the, um, you know, the ratio, if you like, when silver was money was uh, around about 15 to one. And if you go back to Diocletian, it was 12 to one, which is interesting, <laughs> which is roughly the proportion, I think, of silver to gold in, in the Earth's crust. Um, you know, I mean, basically, um, what's going to happen with silver is that as gold goes up, and it's not so much gold going up, it's the dollar going down. Silver goes up roughly twice as fast um, because nobody's got it. It's a very tight market. Um, and, um, you know, the, the, the bullion banks are getting squeezed, something horrible. They are not as quite as squeezed as much as they are in terms of the total market as they are in the um, uh, gold contract. Because in the gold contract, the um, uh, mines um, uh, aren't really hedging their position. That, the, you know, <clears throat> mine management, which actually has stuff which comes out and they've got enough cash flow in order to pay the wages and all the other expenses. They're not going into the market and uh, hedging, the, the, hedging the gold price. But when it comes to silver, a lot of them do for the very simple reason that most silver doesn't come from silver mines. It comes from copper mines, from nickel mines, from lead mines and, and gold mines. So you can see that this is. Uh, silver, if you like, is something on the side and you're not really interested in what the price of silver is. So what you'll do is you'll sell it forward into the market. And this is what they're doing. Um, so the, the the swaps and bullion banks aren't, you know, they're not in quite the same position that they are with gold. But that said, um, the liquidity in the silver market is extremely tight. And uh, it's not going to take very much investor demand to drive it a lot higher. Now, um, I think I said earlier that uh, silver, you know, popped up and had, a, 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 you know, sort of broke into new high ground. I mean, new high ground since 2012. Um, this, I mean, the, the, the chart pattern under it is immensely bullish. I mean, you know, make no mistake. This, once it clears the 32 and a half level, I don't see very much to stop it going up to 50. So, you know, that's just reading the chart. That's just reading the chart. Uh, and, um, you know, I'm not the only person who will be reading the chart that way. Uh, so you can see that, uh, you know, we're getting pretty close to a position where there's likely to be an avalanche of demand by investors who do not have silver. And they don't have gold either, incidentally. I mean, the amount of gold that anybody owns is really very, very low on average. I mean, we're talking about what, 1% of portfolios or something. I mean, it's it's peanuts. When really you should be um, seeing an average of somewhere between five, 10 and even 15% if you're really, you know, sort of worried about the future. I, you know, that's, where's that gonna come from? I mean, it's just not there. And it's interesting because if you look at the ETF demand, physical ETF demand, it's turned around from net sellers over the last four, four or five years. They're now beginning uh, to um, uh, be net buyers. And where are they going to get it from? <laughs> it's not there. It's not there. 
So we've got, I think we've got a squeeze on the system here, which actually could be life threatening for some of the weaker members in the system. Um, I mean, what you're saying about, um, uh, you know, being in deficit for the last four years, I mean, that's basically uh, something that the Silver Institute um, has, uh, you know, pointed out in, in uh, the tables which it accompanies its annual reports. Um, and, um, you know, th the way they lay these tables out, um, you see there's a sort of, you know, the gap, as it were, between uh, visible demand and visible supply, <laughs> you know, which is like that. Um, you know, they pencil in a number which is investment um, and uh, it's not investment at all. I mean, quite a lot of this is, is industrial stockpiling, actually. Uh, and the problem with um, silver is that any industrial stockpiler, you know, the idea that they might try and push the price down because it's in their interest to have a lower price, they're too frightened to do it. They, would, they don't want to do that because they'd lose it and they don't get it back. They know that. Uh, there's... I mean, as far as as far as demand for gold and silver, it's really all in the futures market at the moment. I mean, we see um, not a lot of uh, demand overnight from Asia now, um, but quite clearly um, the pairs trade by which I mean, what the hedge funds do is they buy gold, sell dollar or sell dot, you know, or sell gold by dollar. You know, they, they never take delivery. They're just literally out of one in the other and then they reverse it. Um, I think um, they're beginning to get really concerned about the outlook for the dollar. And uh, the cut in, in Fed funds rate you know, recently, um, 50 basis points, um, I think sent a very clear message that uh, the Fed is now less worried about inflation and more worried about the prospects of a stalling economy even though that wasn't said in the FOMC statement by Jay Powell. Um, so on that basis, and also if you look at the chart, if you look at the chart for the tr dollars trade weighted, um, there's something called a death cross, which is very, very bearish. Basically what a death cross is, is you get the price underneath the moving averages with the shorter moving average. In this case, we're looking at the 50 day, 55 day moving average crossing down and accelerating now under the longer term 200 250 day moving average now what that tells you is that the the um, uh, dollars trade weighted is very definitely in a bear market and i think when the 100 figure i mean at the moment it's at 100.5 or something when that 100 figure gets broken um i think all hell's going to get loose uh, and uh, so what the hedge funds, the pair traders are doing is they're anticipating this event. Um, so this does give us the potential maybe for, um, you know, if we get a little bit of a bounce in the dollar, you know, perhaps um, you will see the uh, uh, gold futures values ease. Um, so there could be a little bit of a correction, but I don't think it's go going to go very far because actually what these pairs traders are doing is they're not so much buying gold futures, but they're selling the dollar. Now, this is a very, very important distinction. That's what they have in mind. They don't want to have the dollar. They think the dollar is going down. And, uh, you know, they can go and buy sterling. They can get, which which they have been. I mean, sterling has been pushed up to 134-ish, something like that. Uh, they can buy the euro, they can buy the yen. And uh, the yen's had a good little run today, which has undermined the Japanese stock market. Um, but the principal thing, because all those currencies have the same problem as the dollar at the end of the day. Um, so the principal way out of the dollar actually is to just get the hell out of credit, which is what the dollar is, and go into real money, which is what gold is. And of course, silver with a... Gold-silver ratio, as I look at it at the moment, around about 84. Um, you know, this is way underpriced relative to gold. So, um, you know, silver was breaking out into um, the highest level since uh, the middle of uh, 2012. Uh, this uh, yesterday, um, you know, it breached the 32 and a half level. I mean, it's it's drifted back today, but you know, I mean do we take this seriously i mean basically ahead of the weekend there are always people who don't want to have open positions over the weekend so you know if you're short dollar long gold you've got a profit 
what you do is you take your profit and uh, you say, right, Monday's another day. And consequently, we've got gold, which um, has been as high as uh, 2685, I think. It's now uh, drifted back to a little bit under uh, 2650. Uh, silver from that peak, it got up to 32 and 70, I think. And we're currently 31 and 51. I mean, this is a, you know, ahead of the weekend uh, uh, um, markdown, if you like, and uh, perfectly normal, nothing to worry about. So that's roughly where we are. I think it's, um, you know, the key points are that um, the demand at the moment isn't so much from the Far East or Asia. Um, I mean, they're still taking out physical when they can. Um, but uh, I think the price drivers have rarely been the hedge funds who have woken up to um, uh, the Fed's dilemma. And the Fed has chosen to, uh, you know, try and deal with um, prospects for a falling, uh, falling stock market, a declining economy, rather than tackling inflation. Inflation has not gone away. That is going to continue to be a big problem. I, I mean, first of all, I just want to correct uh, what happened in the great financial crisis is that everybody went for safety. Now, in those days, safety wasn't gold. Safety was the dollar. And the result was that uh, gold fell from uh, over $1,000 an ounce down to, I think, something like 680, uh, really quite quickly. But, you know, once um, that initial shock had passed, gold started powering up and um, it was hitting new highs um, uh, for the next two years and ran up to a high of 1924, something like that. I think that was September 2011. <clears throat> so... Um, this is fundamentally different. Now, you're right. We don't have a visible crisis at the moment, but there are a number of things in the background, which just because it hasn't sort of hit the headlines, we, we are aware that there are problems. We look at the central bank's balance sheets. They're heavily into negative equity. We look at um, uh, the situation for the commercial banks. They are highly leveraged and therefore vulnerable to, to um, any shock. Um, we have um, inflation is a continuing problem. And if you look at the budget deficits uh, and uh, particularly um, if we get a downturn in the economy, they're just going to run away. I mean, you know, and that is the source of inflation. Another source of inflation, of course, is excess consumer spending. And if you look at what the consumers are doing, um, they've tapped out their savings and, uh, you know, they've increased their credit card debt. So. Basically, um, you know, everything is still driving prices higher, even though the economy is in, um, if you like, not very good shape. Uh, so um, overall, you know, on that side of things, things don't look that, that smart. And then if we go internationally, you can see that the dollar has a problem because the Chinese and the Japanese are no longer buying US Treasury debt. The Chinese in particular, are doing what I've just said the hedge funds are now doing in America. They've been selling dollars. And guess what? <laughs> They've been buying gold. Um, and uh, so have the, have the Chinese citizens. So have the Indian citizens. Now, I think that's died down a little bit now. But, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, the idea that um, uh, the uh, U.S. Treasury is going to be able to fund itself uh, from foreign demand, forget it. That's not going to happen. It really is not. Now, this means that um, uh, the US Treasury are in a debt trap. Um, and we can see this. So, OK, we don't actually have a visible, you know, sort of huge, great Lehman moment, but we can see that there are these problems. So that's roughly where we are. I mean, there's there all these huge, great problems. We know the problems are there. We know that the foreigners are no longer buying uh, US treasuries. And perhaps uh, while foreigners understand that the US government is in a debt trap from which there is really no escape other than really slashing government spending way down. I mean, you know, surplus, surplus immediately next year. That's the only way out of this. On that basis, um, I think I think it's not just foreigners. I think um, you know some of the institutions, some of the investing institutions, hedge funds, and so on and so forth in America are actually getting worried about this funding problem. They can see it. I mean, they've been reading my stuff, I'm sure, <laughs> and others. Not, not just me, but you know, um, 
and and indeed, I mean, these guys are not idiots. Um, you know, they play the markets and all the rest of it, and they may be Keynesian and they're all into macro this and all, but actually they're not stupid. So what we're going to see, I think, is um, a growing realization in um, the investment establishment in America that America has got a problem. And it's not just the foreigners looking at it, it's America, American institutions seeing this as well. So who needs a crisis? This will generate a crisis of that, I'm, I'm absolutely certain. And to an extent, um, uh, you know, if you're a, if you're running, um, you know, funds in America, you you'd be looking at this and thinking, well, yeah, yeah um, we got to de-risk our portfolios. So what do you do? Get out of credit. Get out of credit. That's my new mantra. And the only way you get out of credit is to get into real money. And guess what? Real money is physical gold. In either in possession or held, if you like, by a reliable custodian out of the banking system on your behalf. 